So good morning. We have heard from Manfred Melinsky that um, we have to face a lot of global problems in our day's world. So from resource depletion to finance crisis, but on the psychological level, there's also increasing stress-related diseases, uh, felt isolation, burnout, you have heard about them. And so clearly we need new models to face this problem. And I think one answer could come from a combination of working together of psychology, neuroscience, behavioral economics, and other fields so that we could change the fundaments of our picture of human nature. So move from a kind of really old fashioned uh, a picture of homo economicus. This is a sketch of how homo economicus could be considered and you find that in, uh, in all textbooks still. So if you cooperate or do choices, financial choices, you have these kind of fixed preferences, context independent, and some beliefs about the other, which you can only update if you have seen the other behaving. And you don't know, and especially you are very selfish. Now, in social neuroscience, we know there are things like stress contagion. When I get stressed, you get stressed whether you want it or not. We can measure it on your cortisol level increase, and that's contagion. So this means we are interdependently linked. Every millisecond we are in a room together, but also, you know, over trading. So we also have something like empathy. We have something like I can feel what you are feeling whether you tell me that or whether I've seen that in the behavior, and we have concern for other, we have compassion and we can measure that. This is something which, you know, even every rat has. It's not just human and this leads to prosocial behavior much more than we think. So this is just to show you these findings basically say the preferences need to be linked and they don't have to always go to choices. We, no, we know much more about what the needs and the, the preferences are of the others uh, than uh, you know, a classical economic thinking would suggest. So um, the other thing which psychology is teaching us, there is no behavior without motivation. So we should replace the term of preferences with motivation. And we have lots of motivation. We have power motivation, achievement motivation. We could be in the threat system, anger and fear coming out of that. But we also have affiliative caring motivation. So here you see, you see it again. And depending on which motivational system is active, it will determine whether you will be prosocial or egoistic or selfish or competitive or something else. So you rather know about which motivation is driving you if you want to predict whether you will see cooperation or not. Um, so another complicated thing is that we just not only perceive the world without filter. Depending on whether I think you are an in-group member or an out-group member, I can measure in my brain in in-group, I will have empathy for your suffering. If you're an out-group member, I will have schadenfreude, rejoice of your suffering and actually not help you. And that can change every millisecond. The other thing we learn from social neuroscience is we can change preferences. We don't call it preference. We can change motivation, intentions. So through mental training, we can actually, even in the adult brain, change things. And we do that with expert, you know, compassion experts and also with naive people. So you see here, it's a one-year mental training study, secular, um, where you train things like attention, social motivation, compassion, empathy, perspective taking, social skills. And it works, even in the adult brain. Even after, you know, one week of this kind of mental training, you can change, you know, functional brain structure. So this is the working model in science. So you have genes, you have environmental trait to measure how differences in individual background are actually affecting training success. You measure the brain to predict how that predicts changes in subjective well-being, but also health, cortisol, immune system and behavior. So we can show that that actually increases you know, affiliation, it decreases stress on the level of cortisol, it increases subjective well-being, and you can show that it increases helping as measured in economic games, so like financial, uh, you know, incentive games. So we have a lot of evidence that this helps. But obviously preferences can be changed by internal mental training, this you always have with you, but also by institutional changes. So you can have nudging, of course education matters a lot, you know, which child do you educate with which kind of preferences, but also institutional design. So the question really is, 
how will we design institutions which foster caring motivation rather than just achievement and power so that we can move to more global cooperation in our world? And this is really what we should focus on. So that would be a new model of human nature at the backbone of a new economy which we call caring economics. So, you know, towards uh, caring of the society. Thank you very much. <laughs>